insemination, or AI as we will refer to it, is a story of bulls and cows and creative people. AI was virtually unknown in the USA before 1939. The Pioneer Unit, founded in Dryden, New York in 1939, moved to Syracuse in 1940 as the Central New York Artificial Breeders Co-op. The bulls shown here were the first ones selected from farmers' herds. Here they're out getting a little bit of exercise in 1941. You'll notice that some still had their horns on. Then in 1945, the Department of Animal Husbandry at Cornell, plus leading dairy farmers, plus the state of New York and Cornell University, joined forces to establish a major co-op at Ithaca on Cornell land. This diverse group had a common cause to provide AI service and do research to advance technology that was so essential to improve this technology. This group became world leaders. Now the cows shown here were in the first herds using AI. As venereal diseases were eliminated by AI and dairy cattle genetics improved remarkably, AI became the greatest domestic animal biotechnology in history. AI has been worth billions of dollars to the dairy industry. This video is from a remarkable 16 millimeter color film taken in 1941. It faithfully shows here how AI was done in the beginning. The driving force behind the initial development was Professor Stanley Brownell at Cornell. From leaders, or many farm leaders were involved, and they eagerly donned their Sunday suits to see how the center operated, and to be sure that animals were well fed. They checked to see if calves born by this new technique were normal in every way. And they believed in the program, but there were many people who were skeptical in the early days of AI. It was reassuring to see that the young calves produced by AI had the same enthusiasm for life as any others. They were sturdy and healthy. All these things that we take for granted today were question marks then. The calves grew into sturdy and healthy heifers followed by hundreds of millions of genetically superior animals since 1941. Now let's follow the journey of sperm in AI as we start with semen collection using a clean artificial vagina for each bull. The semen sample is checked quickly for general appearance and the tube of semen is carefully labeled to identify each bull. A microscope was used to examine the sample to be sure that it had lots of rapidly moving, swimming sperm. This was the big test in those days for semen quality. Then semen was slowly cooled by putting it in a glass of warm water before placing it in the refrigerator at five degrees Celsius, which is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, we protect the sperm during cooling by adding a, an extender to protect the semen uh, as they're cooled to five degrees Celsius. This extender is a, was a fresh egg yolk citrate. It was developed by Salisbury at Cornell and is being prepared here. Egg yolk is separated from the egg white and then the egg yolk is mixed with a sterile sodium citrate solution. Later, semen will be mixed with this cooled extender to keep the sperm alive for several days. Balloons filled with water, frozen and then slightly defrosted, are used to keep the semen cool during shipment to inseminators in the field. Tubes of extended semen are filled for each inseminator. They are carefully labeled, the cork tubes sealed with paraffin and then wrapped to prevent breakage. You know, everything was glass then, no plastics. The semen and the balloon of ice are wrapped together and placed in an insulated box for shipment. The labeled box shows special delivery being used. 
The vintage car is taking the semen to the post office. It is directed to post offices in farming areas and delivered to the inseminator the same day or the next day. A typical 1941 mail truck was used to deliver the semen to the inseminator. Often a driver was a personal friend who knew where the refrigerator was located. Sterilizing equipment, which was all glass in 1941, was a big job. All the syringes and pipettes for insemination had to be washed daily and placed in the little steam sterilizer. There they will steam for at least one hour. When sterilized and cooled, the instruments are removed and carefully wrapped without touching them directly with the hands. They are placed in a special case, which has a space for also carrying a thermos or vacuum bottle with ice water to keep the tubes of semen cool. The inseminator checks to be sure that the semen contains a good supply of actively modal live sperm, as seen with his simple microscope. The inseminator now is ready to visit herds. A dairyman phones the inseminator that he has a cow to breed. The inseminator's assistant takes a phone call with information on the cow and farm location. The messages are put in order geographically so that the travels over bumpy roads to scattered farms will be efficient and on time. The inseminator is off to each farm where he will put on overshoes and obtain fresh water. Even the dog knows this regular visitor to the farm and is not alarmed by his presence. In the barn, the inseminator checks to be sure he has identified the correct cow. He dons clean latex gloves, sleeve, and rubber apron. The contents of the rectum of the cow are removed to facilitate careful manipulation of the cow's cervix with one hand while the glass catheter attached to the glass syringe containing semen is manipulated through the vagina and cervix with the other hand. Semen is deposited gently, just forward of the cervix. Washing with water containing disinfectant was important. Care not to spread any disease was very important. Tagging calves in the ear to identify those resulting from semen from each sire also was important so that eventually production of daughters of different bulls could be identified and compared. Inseminators were trained to keep good records and to help the farmer keep good breeding records also. Triplicate breeding receipts as well as herd information were completed by the inseminator. One breeding receipt went to the Central AI Co-op, where similar records were kept. The farmer also had a receipt, as he was expected to pay cash on the spot, and the receipt could be used as a record of breeding. And so the AI program grew, producing more and more genetically superior calves. Veterinarians were involved to aid in the herd health program. Antibiotics were introduced in the late 1940s to control venereal diseases. Healthy cows, mothers of AI produced calves themselves, also were grazing in the fields, in the pastures on many farms. Today, the New York Artificial Breeders Co-op is merged with others and known as GenX. CRI. Many advances in technology have occurred, particularly with frozen semen, permitting superior genetics to be distributed through pathogen-free frozen semen throughout the world and on into the next millennium.